Hi, I'm Margaret Lewin and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Today is part two of the catch-all caddy. And this is what the catch-all caddy is going to look like when it's all done. So at this point, what we have already made is our handles. We have done the pocket sleeve for the base of our caddy. And we have started preparing some of the other stuff. So what we're going to finish up today are the side pockets, which is what this is, and this. We are also going to be working on, this is the bag, how it's going to sit. And here's a zippered pocket on one side, which is really cool. Look. And then on the other side is just a plain pocket. We, I'm going to set my handles aside. And then we are also going to bind the top edges of our two outside pockets. And I want you to see what I did. I used a decorative stitch that was wider so that I didn't have to worry so much about it being picked up on both sides of the piece. So I'm going to show you that. Then we have also made already our zipper pull. That was in the first one. And then these are the other pieces that we have to put together. This I wanted to show you is the side of our bag. Isn't that just the cutest? I'm really excited about that. And the other thing that we're going to do is make the bias binding. Now, we will be putting the entire bag together next week. Make sure that you're subscribed to my channel so that you can get notified when I go about uploading my next video. So let's get started on our catch-all caddy. All right, the next things that we need to prepare are the inner front dividers. And there are two of them that we're going to do. This is one that I've already gotten prepared. All right. And this is one that I'm about to prepare. So I want to show you what I did. What I did was created this little faux header. So it kind of looks like it's, it looks like it's all finished off and it was really easy to accomplish. So I wanted you to see that. I also want you to know on this one, there is a white line that I drew here and they told me not to sew on it. So I didn't. You're going to want to grab a couple of marking instruments. Now, one of them is my friction pen. And I use that on the lining side, okay? And then the other thing I grabbed was my chalk marker. I love these chalk, chalk markers. What you are also going to want to have is your pencil sharpener. I'm going to take my piece of chalk out and show you. See how easy it is to sharpen this? And I will tell you, it will get really, really nice and sharp because we don't want to mess up our points in our lines where we have to line these things up. And to put it back in, you just push down on it. See those little claws open up? And you just put it right back in, line it up to where you want it to be, and then it's all ready to go again. These are on my website. I use these quite a bit, so I wanted to show you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew my quarter of an inch, then I'll come back and show you how to press it and what we're going to do next. All right, I have sewn it. I got my seam. So the next thing I'm going to do is set my seam. And then once I've set my seam, it tells me to press it towards my lining fabric. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just going to flip it over and press it towards my lining fabric. Then once I've done that, I'm going to pick this up, fold it over, and just line it up here with the bottom of it. See, now won't that look really neat? All right, so I'm going to press this. And then according to the directions, I'm going to stitch in the ditch right down through here. And then I'm just going to do a quick stitch all the way around. Now you're going to do that to both pieces, okay? All right, I have sewn, maybe you can see my stitches. I've sewn across there and it also told me to sew all the way around it. So I did that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the cutting table and I'm going to do a bunch of measurements. It tells you exactly where you've got to make marks on this fabric in your pattern. So make certain that you pay close attention to where it needs to be. So I'm going to take my marking instruments and head on over there. 
I've made all my markings. I'm not sure if you can see them or not, according to the pattern. And the next thing that I am going to do is just like I did before. I'm going to take my fabric and beginning on the main side, I'm going to fold it over at every one of these chalk marks. And then once I've got it folded over, I'm going to start stitching here, stitch to the that line, and then back down again and keep doing that all the way through. All right, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to take care of preparing the front pocket A and the back pocket B and then the side pockets. In order to do this, what I did was I took my strip of fabric that's labeled for the binding for those two pieces. I pressed it in half and then I picked up my two sides and brought those into the middle and then folded it over again and pressed it again. I'm gonna do one more quick press. And then what I'm gonna do is take my wonder clips and I'm just going to lay my fabric down and then clip it in with my wonder clips. And those are gonna hold it nice and tightly for me. I'm just taking it, making certain that it's all the way up and that it's straight. Just gonna lay it right over. Almost done. And now that I have that done, I want to show you how I stitched the first one. You know, one of the things about doing bindings like this is you can't really see whether or not you're catching it on the back side. And I do have a tutorial that shows you how to do machine binding, and I'll link that for you below. But one of the things I really like to do is what I did here, was I took my binding, and then what I did was I used one of my decorative stitches so that it looks really nice. It looks all nice and finished off. But look here on the back side. There were a couple spots that I'm not perfectly even. Well, you don't see that. So you might want to try out one of those fancy stitches on your sewing machine because it'll help to make it look really pretty on the inside. So I'm going to go stitch this one, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing to my two side pockets. So it'll be the side pocket C. Then we're gonna move on to number five, which is preparing our zippered slide pocket D. So I'll get these all sewn up and then I'll see you again. Right, I'm gonna try to show you how I go about attaching this binding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at one end and you can see I've got it there. Then I'm gonna really pull it tight right around the end. Now, if you want to, you can always stick a pin right there to help it stay together. I'm gonna go down a little bit farther and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna grab it and press it over and I'm being pretty tight with it, okay? I'm gonna pin it again. Now, the other thing you can use is Wonder Clips. I do really like the Wonder Clips. The the first couple of times that you do this though, I would really suggest that you use pins. I think it just works a little bit easier. So you can see I'm grabbing it, I'm holding it with this finger, and I'm just kind of pulling it around, okay? And then I'm gonna pin it. So again, I'm holding it, grabbing it, pulling it around, and then I'm gonna put a couple wonder clips in now. Just kind of squeezing it right there. All right, so there's my piece all ready to go. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that center guide on my walking foot, and I'm gonna line it right up here with the edge of my fabric. That's off a little bit. I wanna straighten that out. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna start right here and I'm just gonna stitch right on down. I'm gonna lock that in a little better. All right, so there's my piece and I'm gonna get ready to sew. Right, I want you to see what it looks like up close. So you can see I lined it up. So on my front side or on the right side of my material, it looks great. And then on the back side over here, 
You can see I was a little bit farther in than I was here, but the good news about it is, is I've caught all of the binding. So now it looks great. I mean, no problems. It's all set to go. I wanted to show you one of the little things I do to make sure that my patterns are right. When I made the zipper pull, I ended up making mine a little bit longer on both ends. I'm trying to do this one handed isn't easy, but I made a little bit longer on both ends, you can see, so that when I go to put this pocket in, what I will be able to do is line it up easier so that I don't have a shortage at the top of both of these ends. And I wanted to show you that. And then the next thing I want to show you is, I'll turn it around so you can see it easier. Here's where I sewed the zipper down, and then here is where I attached it down so that it had a nice finished off seam. So I want to show you that too. All right, I've got my piece, and here are my, you can see my binding on it, and I've laid my two pockets down. Now on this one, I'm going to sew just what it tells me to on the pattern on there, and then on there, but I want you to see that they are being placed right sides down, okay? So I'm going to get those stitched. Alright, I have stitched it, and then done what they told me to do. So I folded it up and what I've done is I've put my clips all the way around it. It's telling me to start up here and sew down and around and I'm not going to do that only because I really want to make sure that these stay together because I've got to keep my zipper open. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start right here. I'm going to stitch down, across, up, and then I'll be able to release this one, stitch across my zipper, then I'll release that one, then I'll stitch across. Okay? All right, now that I've got my pocket done, here's one pocket, my zipper, and you can see I've trimmed it according to what it said, and then here is my other pocket. I am really glad that I did my stitching in different directions because I think that makes, you know, it adds a little pizzazz to it. So this is actually going to end up sitting like this. I hope you can see that. So next step is I need to cut some bias binding because it's important that it be biased now. And um, we will start putting it all together. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is create true bias binding. I've cut my square according to the directions. And the next thing I'm gonna do is take a long ruler and I am just going to cut it from one end to the other. I am lining the bottom of it up on the 45 degree, just trying to make sure that I've got it pretty straight just to give me a little bit of an assistance and I'm going to cut this. All right, now that I've cut this, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two pieces. Here is one of them and here is the other one. And what I am going to do is simply line them up just like this. Once I've done that, and I am going to have a little hangover here and here, and that's because this is cut on, they're both cut on the diagonal. So I'm going to line these up as best I can. Then I'm going to take them over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch. Once I've sewn the quarter of an inch, the next thing that I am going to do is I am going to press the seam to one side. Doesn't really matter which. But I'm going to press the seam to one side, and then I'll be back to show you how I cut it. Okay, so now you can see that we've kind of got this funky-looking piece here. It, it just looks a little strange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at seven and a half, and I am just going to cut two and a half inch strips all the way across, all right? I'm going to have to bring this down a little bit, just like this, so that I can get to both sides of it. 
and I've lined this bottom right up on my mat so that I know I'm pretty straight. So here's one cut. Now I'm gonna go in two and a half, so I'm gonna go to five. And again, just making certain that I'm lined up from one end to the other so I can do one solid cut. Here's another one. And now I'm gonna do one more. Then I'm gonna remove these strips and I'm just gonna cut the rest of what I've got here. Bias binding is that simple. It does not have to be hard at all. You, you can very easily and simply do it. it. We tend to make it harder than what it truly is. So here's my strips. I will line those up. So I'll take one piece, I'll choose this end. I will draw my diagonal line, I'll sew my seam, and then I'll flip it over so that I've got a nice continuous long bias binding. So here's my three pieces that I've done. Oh, caught here. There I go. Now I, I probably will get maybe two more. What do you think? Nope, I'm only gonna get one more. So here's my last one. This is an extra piece. Might be time for a new rotary blade. And I'm going to put all of these together, and then I'm going to have my nice bias binding. And look at how much it stretches. Isn't that amazing? So there we go. I will take this, once it's all put together, I'll take it over to the ironing board, and I'm going to press it in, and then I'm going to press it into the middle so that I've got a nice full piece of bias binding. Thank you so much for joining me today while we did part two of our catch-all caddy. Make certain that you're subscribed to my channel, please, so that you get notifications whenever I upload another video. This fabric is Jane Sassman's, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I'm in love with it. It's called Spring Fever, and I think it's just the absolute cutest. Please make certain that you're part of our Facebook group, Margaret Lewin Quilting, so that we can all share our pictures of our catch-all caddies and all the other projects that we're doing. I'm recently on Instagram, so don't forget to go search me there if you're on Instagram. I'm Margaret Lewin Quilting. And last but not least, don't forget to sign up for my email so that you get notification whenever I'm posting a new video. I'll stick a link below so that you can sign up. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Bye. Bye.